It doesn't matter how many miles I have to drive to reach my next destination. I just do it. And I keep thinking what's gonna happen when I will be there. And suddenly, the time comes. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Give me a second. Today, I want to talk with you about something that I really care about, which is the difference between the survival kit mentality and the survival mentality. Uh, I want to talk about how they can be related and how sometimes the survival kit mentality overcome what is really important, which is building up our own mentality, our own survival mentality that you can apply daily or in a specific situation, in the outdoors or in a, in a urban environment. Uh, so let's go. I'm here in the same place of the last two videos. I think I will come back to this place in the next two, three months. I want to know as much as I can about this area. Uh, I want to map and record in my memory uh, all the safe spots uh, where I can camp, all the uh, water resources. And I used to do it every time I go in a new place. As I already told in my last video, water is not the main concern here, but due to the fact that are, there are hundreds of fallen trees that we usually call widowmaker, find a safe place to camp is my main task. As you can see, clouds are getting into the forest I'm not sure if it's gonna rain today <laughs> how beautiful is that those clouds make this forest so special do you agree with it? Let me know in a comment. I want to show you something. There's a rock formation here in the forest. I never check it out. So we are going to discover what it is together. Everything is steep here. Look at this. It's a it's a natural shelter. I'm not sure how safe it is, but as you can see, if it's rain or something happen, it could be a good place to hide. And I think the rock is pretty compact and there will be a chance to spend the night safe and sound let's go as I already told you guys gear is really important but in a real survival situation our mindset will help us out to get out from a dangerous situation It's the mind that usually choose what skills to apply 
what to do in a specific situation and what piece of gear we, we should have to use to get out from the situation and I want to get straight with you guys on a specific aspect the term survival has been unfairly overused on the internet what people tend to define survival I do, I do survival here, I do survival there, I've been in the woods surviving it's just inconvenient camping it's a, it's a very controlled scenario where you try to get rid of commodities and try to get used to be more uncomfortable but does nothing have to do with real survival in a, in a real survival situation you have 24 to 72 hours to get out from that situation it's not a pleasant moment and your skill your mindset will change drastically what's gonna happen from that moment on so it, it's very important to pay attention and listen to professionals uh, I'm, don't, I'm not consider myself one of them uh, as a matter of fact I, 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 I keep taking classes, classes because I, I have to learn a lot and I truly hope that this COVID situation will end up soon because uh, I have some classes that I, I want to, to attend in the United States with my brother and mentor Dave Canterbury and I, I look forward to it because uh, I, I have to learn I, I, we are natural lovers we are not mambo, rambo, jumbo and we, we, we are here to know more about mother nature and, and how to live better along with it and understand my granitic statement on it because there's too much misconception on the internet these days we are a strong community filled with passionate people and we are so blessed to have those amazing skilled human beings to learn from the other side of the coin is that the internet is full of rambos that most of the time are just professional dragons keyboards clickers that aren't trying to sell their magic and for me it's mandatory to help others to keep walking on the right path, sharing and suggesting. Sorry guys if I keep running from time to time, but I'm under training for my next solo trip. By the way, one of the most fundamental rules in survival and in the outdoors living in general is the conservation of resources. From the edge of your knife to your personal energy, also known as calories. better to find a better place and keep talking about the difference between survival mentality and survival kid mentality let's go
I've stumbled across this beautiful frog's pawn. Mother Nature is doing her best here. Do you know the difference between a frog's pawn or a toad's pawn? Frog's pawns are laid in big clamps of jelly in shallower water. Todd's pawns lay long strings of eggs, which will usually spot rapid around vegetation in slightly deeper water. This is definitely a messy place. A lot of widow makers, oh, lots of trees that are already fallen. Oh, hey, I love it. Let's go. I just want to, to find a safe route to go down. Hmm. I don't like this tree. One, two, three. Let's go here. Interesting. I'm starting to see some flat terrain, so. It's time to get to the point. We've seen survival kit of any shape and size on the internet. From the cheapest one to the most expensive. Are they really practical? Are they truly helpful? I personally think that a survival kit is just a start, definitely not the end. It's a good way to start thinking about what should be helpful to carry daily according to our skill set. I mean, what are those individual pieces of gear that will be important to have during a survival situation? Should we really carry all them stored in one box so if we lose it we won't have anything with us? I personally think we shouldn't. The conception behind the survival team or survival kit is based on soldiers' experience and their needs. They need to compartmentalize everything and they will do the same if I were a soldier, but we are civilians. And in my personal experience, after almost 12 years, Carry a tin or a plastic box filled with important objects for my safety is it's very impractical. With the right mindset and the proper training, we are the survival kit, and we can carry each piece of kit in our pockets so there won't be the risk to lose everything. I mostly wear cargo pants so I can distribute my emergency gear around me. Here what I'm usually carrying. A Sea to Summit dry bag, just in case I have to protect my cell phone. A Leatherman Super Tool 300, I love its multi-functionality. A big glider wrapped with Gorilla Tape. A tiny piece of fed wood, just in case. A ferro rod, I usually carry a smaller one if I'm in the city. A good quality space blanket, also known as an emergency blanket. It weighs just 2.5 ounces and it protects us from water and wind. A small spool of bank line. I also carry a sailing needle in my wallet. It's great for backpack and gear repair. You can improvise a compass with it and it can also be used for medical purposes. Last but not least, I always carry a mini inferno waterproof disc. It's a very good tinder for emergency situations. 
Here's what I consider a good kit to carry around, and it can be easily carried in our pockets. By the way, you can also carry a folding knife instead of a multi-tool, but we all know that the multi-tool itself is more multi-functional. Wait, 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 I got an idea. Would you like to see me spending an overnighter just carrying these pieces? Please, let me know in the comment. I truly hope you found my ideas helpful and feel free to contact me on my social media for everything you need to know about this matter. I'm so glad to help. And at the end, it rained. Be safe out there, dear friends. As you can see, oh, it's, it's very steep. I come in from there. There are a lot of dead trees, standing dead trees. It's it's crazy, and the and the and the weather and the weather is getting very worse. Talk to you later, friends. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you guys for your support.